Hello and welcome to SNN News on the R. First, let's take you to the major headlines. Primate Henry Undukuba suggests to the federal government the need to urgently set up a new comprehensive sovereign national dialogue to address the multiple problems in Nigeria. As Christians prepare to observe the Lenten season, the Reverend Colonel Dr. Emmanuel Imerhai reminds the Anglican faithful to prepare for this special season of the church. And on the state governor Rotimi Akera Dolu and on your state governor Shenyu Makinde, visit the Shasha area of Ibadan or your state. Appeal to the warring parties to embrace peace and dialogue. And now the news in details. The Archbishop Metropolitan and Primate of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, the Most Reverend Henry Indukuba, has suggested to the federal government the need to urgently set up a new comprehensive sovereign national dialogue to address the multiple problems. In According to him, the issue of justice, equity and equality of citizens in a free and democratic society remained an issue that must be openly and frankly discussed, legislated and implemented for the survival of Nigeria. Primate Ndukuba speaking at the recently concluded standing committee meeting held in Onitra and Abra State said it had become imperative that Nigerians deserve a new Nigeria for all citizens where resources are judiciously distributed for the good of all. Nigeria is at the brink of becoming a failed state and we are not too far from Somalia. The arrogance and imposition of armed cattle, cattle herders or any other ethnic nationality or other religious colorings in our national life is worrying. The issue of justice, equity, and equality of citizens in a free and democratic society remains an issue that must be openly and frankly discussed, legislated, and implemented. We therefore call for a new comprehensive sovereign national dialogue by all the ethnic nationalities and regional representatives. Our present system breeds greed, corruption, anarchy, and injustice. We need a new Nigeria for all citizens. And that's the primate of all Nigeria, the most reverend Harry Ndukuba. Meanwhile, on the state of the nation, the Anglican Bishop of Kaba Diocese, the Right Reverend Stephen Akobe, has advised the church not to be discouraged with what is happening, rather be prayerful as that is the weapon God has given to the church to fight with. He gave this advice while speaking in an interview with ACNN News correspondent Nzubechi Frank in Onicha, and Abra State. Our nation is breaking into pieces. Disaffection everywhere, bitterness, anger, hunger, hatred, killings, maiming, kidnapping, name it, banditry, all kinds. We haven't seen it like this before. It has never been like this. We are so divided along political lines, along religious lines, we no longer trust each other. There is suspicion, there is acrimony, there is hatred, there is bitterness, injustice, insensitivity all over the place. And government seems to be helpless. Government seems not to have a clue. It's as if there's no direction and there's no end in sight. And the church is affected. But for me, one way out 
is that the church must not be discouraged. Christians must not give up. We must not just, you know, hang our faith, give up on our faith, and resign our faith and ourselves to despondency, to despair, and to all of that. Let us pray. We can still pray. That is the weapon that God has given to the church. That if we cry unto him, that if we call upon his name, he would hear us, he will answer us. So this is where the church comes in. And this is where the church must act. The need for this discipleship and the move by the parameter for Nigeria Anglican Communion to bring this discipleship to the doorstep of every Christian in Nigeria has led the Reverend Colonel Dr. Emmanuel Imerkai to pay a pastoral visit to one of the rural churches under the Gadua parish of the Gudi Archdeacery, Diocese of Abuja. He went in the company of his team of evangelists to celebrate Holy Communion and anoint the members of the church. Also, those who gave their lives to Christ were enlisted in the discipleship program. Charles Philip Wakolam has the rest of the story. Every month, Canon Dr. Imano Imahai visits churches under him to celebrate Holy Communion with them, anoint them, and raise disciples amongst them. It was a spiritually refreshing time in the presence of God at the Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Tutsiapo, in Gudu Artikiri, Abuja Diocese, in a Holy Communion service with Canon Imahai and his team of evangelists and disciples. Members communed in Bible study, praises, special ministration from the Zumutamata group and revival are. But I've come to announce to you today that God is bringing help your way. That help you will need to revive your business. God will give it to you today in the name of Jesus. If you are in crisis, love lost, and your marriage, God is bringing Also with special anointing from the vicar and his team. Well, the primate had uh, declared his tenor the reign of God. And when he says the reign of God, it involves evangelism and discipleship. So that's what we have come here to do today. The people are happy. About uh, 15 to 17 people gave their lives to Christ. And we already have a discipleship class going on here. We do it every month to see that we do our pastoral duty and our commitment to the people. For the evangelists in charge of the church, it is always spiritually uplifting to have the vicar around. Our vicar indeed has always been an immense help to the church, more especially the church here, Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Dusi. The love he has been showing the church in his pastoral ministry has been so awesome. Every time he used to bring Holy Communion and uh, other programs which are spiritual upliftment to the life of the members of the church. In fact, we really appreciate it. From Dutsi Apo, Charles Philip Wakolam, ACNN News. Thanks to you, Charles Philip Wakolam, for that report. The Reverend Colonel Dr. Emmanuel Emerkar has reminded the Anglican faithful that the Lenten season is and that all should prepare for the special season of the church. He said this while speaking with Charles Philip Wakulam on the significance of Queen Quagestiman Sunday, which he said comes 50 days to Easter. When you hear Jessima, it shows that Lent is at the corner, it shows that Easter is at the corner also. So it's at 50 days to Easter, and then it's about a few days to Lent. And Lent is a season we deny ourselves, a season of self-denial, or so many things to reach out to the poor. There are so many things we need to do, good works and so on, to refine ourselves, getting closer to God the more, uh, examining and re-examining ourselves to be sure that we are 
in Christ. It's one thing to say it is Lent, it's another thing to actually prepare for Lent. In Chronicle, the scripture says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek me. So we need to prepare our members to seek the Lord truly in this Lenten period. There may be habits that they have. In this Lenten period, God can be dealing with those habits. We need to return to God. You're still watching the ACN and he's on the hour and still to come. Neymar justifies Sarko 48 workers. These and more stories after this break. Please stay tuned. My name is Odedeji James, the Bishop of Dallas of Lagos West. We'll enjoy this platform at all times. I encourage everybody, be interested, develop yourself, develop your family, call your family together so that everybody will enjoy themselves as we fellowship together. God bless you. Amen. As we look unto God for his mercies during this year's Lenten season, the Diocese of Lagos Anglican Communion invites you to join us at the 2021 Lenten Diet, tagged Surprise and Victory. This is a program of intensive Bible study for 40 days at all parishes in the Diocese of Lagos Anglican Communion. The Bible study booklet is available for free in all the parishes. Join us physically every day from Ash Wednesday, 17th of February, 2021, between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. to study together at the Lord's feet. You can also connect with us via our online platforms and Lagoon Radio. Come and enjoy your glorious time in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Timberlock Wood Preservative surpasses all preventive measures designed to permanently prevent the damage and quality reduction of wood and wood-based materials by termites, fungi, bacteria, and other boring insects. Use Timberlock Premium Wood Preservative to prevent, correct, and defend wood and wood materials against deformities caused by termites and other insects in the later days. Timberlock is designed to solve wood preservation challenges with a standard you can trust. Timberlock Wood Preservative kills termites instantly. Timberlock Wood Preservative, the wood preservative brand leader in Africa. Thank you for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or our social media platforms on facebook.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. To be up to date with our news and other programs, Download the VM Africa app from Android and iOS stores. And you can also advertise your goods and services on ACNN TV. And moving on to the national scene, President Muhammadu Buhari has vowed that his government would protect all religious and ethnic groups, whether majority or minority in line with its responsibility under the Constitution. Madam Garba Sheu, one of the president's spokesmen, said in a statement in Abuja that Buhari made the assertion while reacting to reports of breakouts of violence in some parts of the country by some ethnic and sectional groups. The president warned that the government would not allow any ethnic or religious group to fund the embers of hatred and violence against other groups. He condemned such violence and gave the assurance that his government would act decisively to stop the spread of any such violence. He appealed to religious and traditional leaders as well as governors and other elected leaders across the country to join hands with the federal government to ensure that communities in their domain were not fractured along ethnic and other elemental lines. Meanwhile, on the state governor wrote to me Akere Dolu, and now your state government, Sheyu Makinde, visited the Shasha area of Ibadan, or your state, and appealed to the warring parties to embrace peace and dialogue. Recall that clashes between traders from the Yoruba and Hausa ethnic groups broke out on Saturday, the 13th of February, 2021, at Shasha Market in Ibadan, the capital of Oyo leaving many people dead and goods and products destroyed. 
Visiting Ondo State Governor Rotemi Akeredolu and Oyo State Governor Sheyi Makinde appealed to residents, in particular the Yorubas in Ibadan, or your state, not to take laws into their hands, rather to embrace peace and dialogue. Well, the uh, curfew is uh, still in force, and uh, uh, I mean, what I saw out there, um, I couldn't uh, uh, really uh, believe the carnage, the loss of lives. They are really uh, needless. So we'll continue to appeal to uh, uh, everyone. Uh, the Constitution of Nigeria, like I said, uh, allows anyone to stay wherever they like, but they must just obey the uh, local uh, laws. So if criminals uh, want to take advantage of uh, the situation, we will not allow it. We will ensure that uh, criminals uh, masquerading as uh, hoodlums will be fished out and dealt with. We have to uh, uh, do quite a bit in terms of uh, normalizing the situation out there. You can see uh, lots of people, uh, their means of livelihood you know, uh, uh, are basically gone. So, what do we do? We have to try and see what we can uh, give as a palliatives immediately. Uh, I have uh, called for a meeting between uh, uh, leaders from both sides this evening. Uh, they will be coming here. I will meet with them. And uh, uh, I believe uh, we will uh, find a uh, find a solution to uh, uh, this unfortunate uh, uh, situation. So I appeal that the rest of the state, they should stay calm. Uh, there must uh, not be any uh, reprisal uh, attack. And for our law enforcement uh, uh, agents, uh, they have to uh, uh, step up their game. Uh, we ask that they dominate that area. We don't want to lose even uh, half a soul uh, right now. So we'll continue to monitor the situation uh, to ensure that uh, the master returns uh, as quickly as possible. I appealed to everybody, let us sheet our swords. Let us be calm. We know that the, we have challenges. There is pent up anger in the land. But at to at least direct whatever operations, whatever actions we will take, and that it was most uncalled for, for us, at this age and time, to have, to be, uh, I mean, uh, setting our properties ablaze, to have to be killing one another. We are brothers, and that's, my, that's, a, that's our own contention. We are all brothers. That's one problem or the other. But this time will soon pass, and that our people should remain calm, sit your sword, there's no need for us to fight, there's no need for any counter-attack, there's no need for any reprisal, everybody should just as much as possible, at least, uh, ensure that you maintain peace. In another development, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has clarified reports that it sacked 48 of its workers. The agency sacked 48 workers one year after recruitment. Reacting, Mr. Manzo Ezekiel, head of the agency's Media and Public Relations Unit, in a statement, said that the agency only correctly notified a questionable and hurriedly arranged recruitment. As he explained that those claimed to have been sacked were candidates of that spurious exercise, and although approval was obtained for the recruitment in 2018, complementary and critical procedures were not followed. He further stated that the supervising minister of NEMA, 
the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development were completely excluded from the recruitment. A renowned diplomat and chair of the 6th Region African Union, Canada and the Americas, who works as policy advisor on diaspora matters at the African Union headquarters, Ambassador Makoli Oyekachi Kalu, has expressed appreciation to the management of Asset Newspapers Limited, publishers of Daily Asset, for choosing him as Distinguished Nigerian Diaspora Leader of the Year and pledge full participation at the fourth Daily Asset Awards and lecture and annual event. The grand event will hold on February 25th in Abuja, the nation's capital, at the conference hall of Nikon Luxury Hotel in the Central Business District. According to the management of Asset Newspapers Limited, publishers of Daily Asset, the theme of this year's event is Conflict Management, Peace Building, and development in a democratic setting. The publisher and editor-in-chief of the newspaper, Mr. Kletus Aquaya, in a statement, said the theme of this event was deliberately chosen to focus on the critical issues of insecurity, peace and development, which according to him are issues of the moment. Other awardees also had earlier confirmed their participation at the event, including the Secretary to Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa. The Nigeria Immigration Service has said that there were no armed headsmen in the country. The NIS spokesman, Sonder James, stated this in an interview with newsmen in Abuja. He also said there had been tight security at borders since the introduction of the Migration Information and Data Analysis Systems, MIDAS. It will be recalled that the federal government had, in November 2019, installed the MIDAS a border management technology at three international airports, 14 land and two sea borders to check irregular migration, human trafficking and other gross border crimes. The MIDS systems were installed at the Motala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Inam Dazikwe International Airport, Abuja, and Malam Aminu Kano International Airport, Kano. In separate reactions, Groups including the Christian Association of Nigeria, the Yoruba Social Political Group, Afeni Fere, the Pan Niger Data Forum, and Ohaneze Indigbo berated the service. On its part, Pandev described the NIS claim as a bland lie and mischievous. Pandev spokesman Ken Robinson said it was better to ignore such ignorant remarks, which he said was tantamount to playing on the sensibilities of Nigerians. Also, the Igbo APES Social Cultural Organization, Ohaneze Indigbo, faulted the NIS for absorbing headsmen and denying that there were no armed headsmen in the country. Ohaneze spokesman Chief said that it was self evident when the presidency told Nigerians that people carrying out criminal atrocities, which included killing of farmers and raping women across the country, were foreign headers. The Christian Association of Nigeria also fought the claim by the NIS. And on the foreign scene, protesters in Myanmar kept up demands for the release of overthrown leader on San Suu Kyi and an end to military by the deployment of armed vehicles in several parts of the country. Suki detained since the February 1 coup against her elected government and had been expected to face a court in connection with charges of illegally importing six walking talking radios. The February 1 coup and the arrest of Nobel Peace Prize winner Suki and others have sparked the biggest protests in Myanmar in more than a decade with hundreds of thousands coming onto the streets to denounce the military's derailment of the country's tentative transition to democracy as the unrest has revived the memories of bloody outbreaks of opposition to almost half a 
army rule over the Southeast Asian nation, which ended in 2011 when the military began a process of withdrawing from civilian politics. And moving on to sport, Arsenal boss Mikel Arteta says Pierre Emerick Aubameyang is back to normal after netting his first Premier League hat trick. Aubameyang led from the front as Arsenal picked up a confidence boosting 4 to home win over Leeds United as the Gabon international has struggled for consistency in 2020 to 2021 but looked back to his best on Sunday afternoon and Arteta singled him out for special praise after the match. Meanwhile, the Gunners head coach told reporters of Aubameyang's effort saying he had a great performance not just for the goals but the amount of pressure he put on every Leeds defender. You're still watching the news on the hour. A reminder of the major stories. Paramount Harry Undukuba suggests to the federal government the need to urgently set up a new comprehensive sovereign national dialogue to address the multiple problems in Nigeria. As Christians prepare to observe the Lenten season, the Reverend Colonel Dr. Emmanuel America reminds the Anglican faithful to prepare for this special season of the church. Plus, on the state governor, Rotimi Akeredolu, and on your state governor, Shayi Makinde, visit the Shasha area of Ibadan or your state. Appeal to the warring parties to embrace peace and dialogue. And so with that, we wrap it up for this edition of the News on the Hour. First John 4 9 says, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. In this Valentine week that leads into Lent, may the reality of the love of God fill our hearts afresh with praise and thanks to Him who loves us with everlasting love. Even our Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching. I am Phoebe Aguirreo. God bless you. Every embargo of the enemy shall get out of your system, your business, your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. In every area of your life, God will grant unto you breakthrough. So I don't know what your own situation is today. Is it economic? The Lord can heal it. Amen.